Well, good morning again. It is awesome to see you. So happy you're here. It's good. And by the way, most of you noticed that we have new entrance doors. Some of you walked right past those to the old, and God bless you, that's fine. That's an option. Some of you actually prefer coming in through the barn because there's still the aroma of horse methane. And um, you just sort of need some of that for your nostrils. I'm seeing that. Okay. Want to make sure. Yeah. Uh, and 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 then what's this? Hallelujah! We got space. We got room. But we just thought you like to be crowded for intermission so much that we just leave it like it is. Actually, no. As you've heard, we're going we're going to move forward. And so, if you want to stay ten minutes afterwards, we're going to move all of this stuff that way. And all the stuff you're sitting in, pick up your chair and move. And we're going to go there. And that means by next week, we'll have plenty of room for coffee and by Christmas Eve we'll have plenty of room for everybody we think it's going to be crowded so come early but uh, it's it's going to be great uh, we'll have people horseback if you have to park too too far they'll give you a ride in um, and and so uh, don't, we got you covered we, we, we got you covered and what Pastor Tom was wanting to point out I, some of you were here last week and, and kind of remember the message others you watched it and I get this t-shirt Team Martha <laughs> it's my size <laughs> I'm a Martha fan as you said I'm betting I'm not going to wear it in public though I, I, I think it takes too much explaining, frankly, but thanks so much for the shirt. I will treasure it. My wife will enjoy it. So, so, so we do a cowboy joke, and, and uh, I, I got a new horse a few months back, and I really, really like him. And one of the reasons I really like him is, is because he's almost always collected and, and balanced, and uh, you, you, you know what to call a balanced horse? Stable. <laughs> well, like a lot of our cowboy jokes, it reminds me of what the triangle said to the circle. You're pointless. <laughs> Let's go. We have been walking through the, the book of Luke in the Bible and taking this long walk with Jesus. And as you might imagine, on Christmas Eve, we're going to back up and sort of start over, but, but we won't come back all this way, this, this, this slowly. But today we have this incredibly important aspect. And so we're going to start with a passage in Luke, and then we're going to go to the Gospel of Matthew because it, it, it opens it up a little more fully. And it's something that most of you are going to be pretty much familiar with and some of you memorized it is very familiar with but l let's go let's read the first passage one day when Jesus was praying in a certain place let me just pause right there you see you see this happened quite a bit before Jesus got ready to call his disciples he took some time out and prayed before uh, in, in the midst of of an incredibly busy schedule and people just thronging them and, and healing and all that. He would just go aside to a mountain place, just a wilderness place, and just just hang out and pray. Uh, this was just a common occurrence, and now it's just Jesus was praying in a certain place. It just, it just, this just happened. And so part of taking a long walk with Jesus, part of hanging out with him like the disciples is did, is, is we get to say, what's up with that? What are you doing? And, and that's what the disciples... When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. So let me pause there a moment and say, these disciples were very religious guys all their lives. They had almost certainly gone to synagogue every Sabbath day. They had heard many, many prayers. They had memorized many, many prayers. Most of the disciples perhaps would have memorized the first five books of the Old Testament of the Bible. So it wasn't like they, they were like, huh, we have no clue. We have no idea. No, here's the problem. Sometimes very religious people need to learn how to really pray. And I'm not against prayers that are written down. I'm not against prayers that are rehearsed. I'm not, a, I'm not against some of those prayers I occasionally listen to and read just because, oh, yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah. And, and it covers some things that I just don't get around to. And I'm not so please understand this. This is not taking away from any of that, except that's not enough. 
And that's what the disciples were observing with Jesus. Like, okay, we've been to synagogue, we, we have this stuff memorized, we've, we've, heard these, we've heard these eloquent and sometimes really long-winded prayers. By the way, when you're asked to pray for lunch, don't do that. <laughs> Three sentences are plenty. Pray for the people in Africa some other time. Just, just, just thank God for lunch and, and get it over with. But that, that is not in the Bible. That's just a pet peeve. So don't, don't you can take it for whatever it's worth. Anyway, these guys had heard. In, in fact, in fact, in Jesus' day, these Pharisees, uh, super religious people, they they had these incredibly long prayers, and people would, oh wow. This guy's really pious because he prayed for a half hour. Nah. Jesus is saying God's not impressed by, by your endurance on that. By how many words you can put together. And sometimes they would actually have people proclaim, Be careful. Listen. Pay attention. His whatever is going to pray now. And Jesus is saying, Don't do that. You know, in fact, it reminds me of a story um, um, way back. Some of you will remember when Lyndon Baines Johnson, LBJ, was president. You're really old if you remember that, but I do. Uh, uh, Lynn, 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 Bill Moyer was his chief of staff, and and uh, they they were having a, a I don't I don't know whether it was a council whatever kind of a meeting, and and they had prayer first, and Bill Moyer's was called on to pray, and LBJ couldn't hear him. And he, he said, Bill, speak up. I can't hear a word you're saying. And Bill Moyer said, uh, well, sir, I'm not praying to you, Mr. President. <laughs> I just think that's cute. Anyway, that's kind of what Jesus would say. Don't, don't be impressed with, with who's listening. Understanding you're having a conversation with the sovereign Lord God, the almighty God, and... and, and so, so that's what they're saying. Jesus, we see something different when you pray. Teach us to pray. So we're going to go there. Now, let's go to the book of Matthew. And this is Jesus' response to this. It's in Luke 2, but it's a little more full in the book of Matthew. So that's why I went there. Here we go. This then is how you should pray. Ah. So here's a primer. And, and I, I just spoiler alert, we're going to get halfway through today. So uh, you've got to come back next week or you'll just be half-baked. Um, um, and, and so uh, so part of what we're going to notice today is priority and focus, which is what we talked about last week. Priority and focus in this praying, and here we go. I'm going to read it through, and then we're going to come back and, and highlight three or four things. This is, then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. Next week we'll talk about this, but that word is also translated as trespasses. And it's most accurately translated as sins. In the original, it was that sounded a little harsh, they thought. And since it's a Greek to English translation, they sort of, they get a lot of truth. Sin is a debt. Sin is a trespass. And it is a sin. And so, but, but forgive us our debts as we have, we also have forgiven our debtors. Oh boy. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now there's a follow up to that. Is on that forgiveness theme. We'll be back next week. But for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Again, I'll get to that next week, but think about it. Let's go. So let's go to the first one up. And, and, and the first thing Jesus says, I want to teach you to pray, is he says, I want you to begin with Father in heaven. God talks to us about being part of his kingdom, part of his body, 
is also like being part of a family. It's one of the prime metaphors that he uses, being part of a family. And I want to say up front that I realize this causes some people some problems because there are many people who don't have what is called a good father image, father concept. There are many people who had a father... Let me, let me rephrase this. Almost... Let me rephrase that. Every one of us had an imperfect earthly father. Every one of us. Some of our earthly fathers were really imperfect. Some of them were flawed. Some of them had parts of their character that were just bad. And if that is you, and when you hear the word father, you go, not, ah, that's warm and comforting and protecting and providing, but rather that's, Repulsive. Let me let me let me say to you, I understand this is a difficulty, but what I want to say to you is that we're talking about our Father in heaven, who is a perfect Father, who genuinely and truly loves you, who plans and wants and provides the best for you, who can be tough can be in your face, not denying that, can at times say, well, you just won't listen any other way, so I've got to switch you around a little. Hello? I mean, sometimes, come on. There have been times when I've just, I've even said to God, seriously, man? I said, well, would you like listen? Oh, yeah, that's an option, huh? Uh, See, see, he can do that, but he's a loving father. He's a redemptive father. He loves you. He protects you. He provides for you. He's everything good about a father. He's perfect. And so when you say father, don't necessarily filter it through your your own father concept. Filter it through, Jesus was saying, I'll share He's my father. I know him. He's God the Father. I'm God the Son. And I got to tell you, he is perfect. And let me share, let me invite you into the family with my father. And I, I got to say this sometimes when I pray, I, I, I try to always start my prayers this way. Don't always, sometimes they're emergency prayers. You don't have time for this. But, but I always start, try to start father and just pause a bit. I had a good father, but not a perfect father. But I got a perfect father. And just say, well, that means I'm your son. Huh? Way cool. I'm your son, I'm your daughter. Way cool. I'm a child of the king. The sovereign Lord God. Mess with my dad. You, you, you hear what I'm saying? This Father in heaven, just let that warm you. Just let that embrace you. I, I really could spend quite a bit, but I have. Let's go. Let's move to the next one. And then he says, here's the first request. And by the way, you're going to see the big division in this prayer. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. These first three are God-focused. And we're going to talk about how that's not normal in our praying. But it's what Jesus said you should do. Before you get to give me this day my daily bread and forgive me and all that stuff, God is saying, let your prayer start being God-focused instead of being me-focused. And it starts with, hallowed be your name. Though the word hallowed, you probably, probably, you, you don't use that a lot, I'm guessing. Uh, everyday conversation doesn't come up, well, this is a hallowed, probably not. But, but you, you, you sort of, it means to make it holy, to set it apart, to sanctify it, to make it special, to make it complete, to reverence it, to give it honor, to give it respect. Hallowed be your name. Oh boy. I could I could spend about two hours here. Somebody set a clock on me, it'll be about five minutes. Because we live in a culture and a time and have for some time when the name of God is treated with such trivial lightness. Which is exactly what he says in the old Ten Commandment. Take, don't take the name of your Lord God in vain. Vain means empty, trivial, lightweight. Don't treat the name, the name of your God lightweight. 
In fact, uh, uh, probably you have on your phone a text that has in all caps, O-M-G. And we just rip it off. Just uh, We've even just made initials out of it. We just say it so, so often. And, and we use it as a curse word. Uh, we use the names of God. We use specifically even the names of Jesus. We use, and, and what I want to say to you, by the way, is if you want to curse in somebody's name, use your own. Don't mess with God's. And God says, I want you to make sure, I want you to know that my name reveals my character. I'm going to talk about that just a little and try not to spend a lot of time there. But I want you to reverence my name. So part of this prayer is, God, that your name be hallowed. And so I will just tell you my prayer. When, when I, I use this pattern a lot and pray, part of it is, Father, you're my Father. Hallowed be your name today. God, I hope that in all the world your name is lifted high, made holy, reverenced, respected, honored today. And I hope today that my life demonstrates that that because there are some people who think I'm a Christian, that I'm a follower of Christ, that I carry your name and I need to carry that with honor. I don't know about you, but my mother every once in a while sending me to school said, you need, you uphold our family name, which I always thought was funny because my name is Smith. (laughs) And I'm thinking, yeah, me and about 500 million other people. You know, I don't think by myself I can take down the whole Smith brand. But she thought that was an imminent problem. Well, transfer that, though. The Almighty Lord God said, you carry my name. I'm your father. You carry my family name. Treat it with respect. Live like you deserve it. Live like you're a child of mine. Give me honor. Lift my name. Hallow my name. May God's name be hallowed in all the earth. Now, some of these days I'll do a a teaching on this. I'm I'm really just going to hit it and bump it and run and go. But I've taken the time to memorize a, a, a bunch of almost all of the Old Testament names of God where he reveals himself. And, and you don't need to do that, but, but let me just give you an example. For instance, Genesis 1, 1 says, In the beginning God created, right? And, and that, that, that name for God is Elohim. You, that's the Hebrew name for God, Elohim, which is, by the way, a plural uh, name. So speaks of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But it is the creative God. You don't get to, oh, you get about halfway through the book of Genesis before you encounter Yahweh or Jehovah where God says I I am I'm the self-existent always present in the present tense God but you start with Elohim so I find myself a lot when I'm out gathering big pastures with some of you or I'm out hunting or I'm out just enjoying the amazing I just oh hallowed be your name your name is Elohim you are the creator God oh wow you do great man this is amazing wow this is awesome you are Elohim and just worship God and hallow his name as that you don't need to know Hebrew names to do that you just worship the name of God Uh, uh, but I'm just saying just honor exalt his name let's go to the next one please I bet that was longer than five minutes, but here we go. Your kingdom come, your will be done, and it follows, you know, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So understand, we've recognized he's Father. We've said, I want to, I want to uplift and exalt your name. I want your name to be good. I want your character to be in me. I want to live life and have others live life now. I want your kingdom to come and your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. I want your kingdom to come and your will be done. Let, let's go to the next phrase that's on there because I think it's, it's important. I came across it in, in researching for this. And here's this phrase. The purpose of prayer is not to get my will done in heaven, but to get God's will done on earth. Oh boy. Now let's, that's a great phrase. I got to tell you, I struggle remembering that at times. Anybody? Because see, sometimes when I get to God, I'm t- and I listen to my prayers, and I listen to some of yours, and it's almost like we're trying to talk God into something. <laughs> you say, come on, God, I, I, can you do this? Come on, God, why don't you do this? Come on, God, why didn't you do this? Come on, God, come, uh, why, do, why, why are you doing this? Come on, God, bail me out of this. Come on. Anybody? See, we're almost trying to, we, we're saying, if I can just get God to see it like I see it, and be on my side... All right. God is saying, if I could just get you to see it like I see it. Oh, well then, it's a done deal. I got you. Hello? 
And by the way, this is part of prayer, is not just asking God for stuff. It is aligning ourselves with the purpose and the will of God so that He readily and easily gives to us. So I try to remember at times, God, help me to figure out where it is you're going and go there. Help me to figure out what you're wanting and ask you for it. Because if I'm praying in God's will, in step with Him, with His kingdom come, so and His will being done, so part of the question I ask myself is, so am I praying for my kingdom and my will? Or am I praying, God, I, I want to find out what's your kingdom and your will and see how I can line for that and let that happen and let that flow through me. Now, it's a struggle sometimes when I observe that it's possible we couldn't be, we we're not on the same page. And I confess, I've spent some time trying to get God, and God reminds me that He did not hire me as a consultant. <laughs> that He's really bright. Like he knows everything about everything. I'm not sure if I know absolutely everything about anything. I know quite a bit about quite a bit, but everything? Hello? And so part of praying is humility, and part of humility is saying, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? See, let, let, me, let me give you an example that fits our part of the world really well. We live in a dry part of the world. Now, we're about to get some help, we think, this week. Um, um, and, and we could, whatever. Uh, um, we'll take it. Uh, and, and sometimes, especially in dry summers, I've had numerous people say to me, well, could you, could you pray for rain? We really need moisture. Could you pray for rain? And I'll just... I'll just forewarn you, you're in for a sermon uh, if you ask me that. Because part of what I say, yeah, I'll pray for that this way. This is the sovereign Lord God who's been taking care of his planet for a long, long time. We have a person or two in the audience today who's in their 90s, but nobody, as far as I'm aware, is over 100. Uh, we've been on this planet for less than 100 years, and God's been around for quite a while. As in forever. He's been taking care of this for a long time. So it would seem to me that me giving God advice about the weather <laughs> is a little impertinent. Hello? I can say to him, as you are aware, it's dry. <laughs> as you are aware, if you send rain, I'd really be happy. But for me to say to God, you need... To water the earth and him not it seems a little impertinent so I'd say may your kingdom come may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven figure this out God you know what we need and when we need it and by the way my observation is it works out after a while I gathered cows out of pastures this year where the grass was still belly deep to the cows that has not been true for the last four but but are, are you with me? And it's only true in localized areas now. I, I get that. Some of you are saying, <laughs> I need you to come to my pasture. I, I didn't do that. Uh, 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 you, are, 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 you, are you with me, though? God, big picture, I think sometimes we need to ask God's will to be done instead of telling Him what He should do. That's, that's, the, that's the genesis of that, right? I don't think it's wrong to ask for rain. I just think we need to have that provision to say, God, is that in your keeping and that's your provision. I've asked God for money at times. That's seldom worked out. But um, uh, I, I've asked God for daily bread. I ask God for stuff. I, I, it's fine. Many of us ask God for healing. We're going to talk about that. That's, that's entirely appropriate. But what we always need to do is say, God, your kingdom, your big kingdom and your will comes first. Help me to see the big picture. Yeah, some of us in this room are interested in politics. And, and we try not to talk about that in church uh, a lot. And because and, most of us need a break. Um, and, and, and sometimes, and I pray about that stuff. But I'm always reminded to say, God's kingdom come. I'll talk about this a little bit Christmas Eve, but just a little bit. But it was, in, uh, it, it was on the original Christmas Eve when the world was ruled by a cruel, despotic, tyrannical dictator. 
and then the person under him over regions like Nazareth and Bethlehem, etc., was even worse. Horrible person. And God used those guys to orchestrate an event that was had been predicted for over 3,000 years that the Christ child would be born in a little village called Bethlehem while his parents lived two days donkey ride away in a crummy little town called Nazareth. But God orchestrated taxes. Oh. And census. Don't like either one of those. And despotic rulers. And completely undemocratic processes. To open the door to get Mary in Bethlehem when Jesus was born. What do I know about God's kingdom and God's timing? Hello? Because I would not have done that. Are you with me? I, I mean, I would have said there's got to be a better way. Come on. Are you, are you with me? God, God, I see, I'm overthrowing Caesar. And God says, I'm going to work through this guy. He has no clue. But I'm going to work through him. Now, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that we should just shrug our shoulders and say, well, whatever. It's, it's, it's going to be okay. I am saying that we need to see that God has this massive big picture. And none of us have all of that. And part of praying is to say, God, how can I align myself? Speak to me. How can I align myself with what you're doing so that your kingdom come and your will be done on earth, right? So... I got to jump now. Next week, next week, we get to give me my daily bread, and I think that covers a lot of not our physical needs, our financial needs, obviously our food, all all, all of those healing, all those areas that that broad category of physical needs, and then keep me from temptation and the evil one. Give me forgiveness and let me be forgiving. Wow, those are key areas. These are these are more me-focused kinds of prayers. So we'll get there next week, but start. So I just want to encourage you to do this this week. Start your praying God-focused. Now, there have been times when I've been on a real bronchy horse that I have not taken time to do this. <laughs> I have flung out a, Oh, God, help me. <laughs> or at least don't help this horse. And I will say it's a mixed bag of how much that gets answered. <laughs> so there are emergency prayers. Got it? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying there's times you, you don't have to go through this. But Jesus is saying I want to lay out for you a framework, a pattern. To say, start with embracing the fact that you're my child. Alrighty then. Start with lifting my name, my character, my person. And start with praying that my kingdom and my will would be done in your world and through your world and through your life. And then let's get to your stuff. I've got to tell you, it will put your stuff in perspective. Because me needing a few bucks is quite a bit different than the kingdom of God coming. You with me? Let's pray. Father, wow. Oh, wow. Incredible privilege of calling you Father. Oh, wow. Father in heaven, we're your children today. We lift your name, we exalt your name. You are the Lord God Most High. You're the Almighty God. You are El Elyon, the God who is higher than the highest. You are El Shaddai, the God who is almighty and all nourishing and all sufficient. You are Jehovah Rohi, the Lord our shepherd. You are Jehovah Rophe, the Lord our healer. You are Jehovah Makedesh, God who is holy. You are Jehovah Sabaoth, 
the Lord of battle, of war. You are Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace, contentment, serenity. Wow, we hallow your name. Help us to live your name and honor your name and rejoice in your name. And God, would your kingdom come and may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that starts right in me. Starts right in us. Starts right in our hearts. Starts right in our head. Starts right in our lives. Starts right in our decisions. May your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as heaven. I pray for our nation. I pray for the nations of the earth. I pray, God, for all of those who are in positions of influence and power, that you would guide them and give them wisdom. And even those who don't want your wisdom, God, would you somehow... Be the sovereign Lord God and work through them. And God, help us to put you first and get in step with you so that our steps make sense for all eternity. I pray this now in the wonderful, matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.